Hello, in this video, we'll have a look on how to get started on creating SharePoint framework solutions for SharePoint 2019. So if you're targeting and still running SharePoint in on-premises, you're hopefully running the SharePoint 2019 version, which is the latest version currently, which supports also modern pages and modern experiences and also SharePoint framework solutions. So how do we get started on this one um, and getting started on creating those SharePoint framework solutions on 2019? First of all, uh, you need to follow up on the guidance uh, uh, to install in your development environment, which is available from the SharePoint development documentation. Uh, you can actually go to the set up your development environment from here, or you can extend uh, the SharePoint framework from uh, menu items from the left menu, and then go to the setup development environment. So the steps for setting up your 2019 SharePoint framework uh, uh, in development environment is exactly the same as defined within this environment or within this documentation even though this kind of refers more on the Office 365 tenant uh, uh, documentation or usage of the SharePoint framework in Office 365 tenant. So we need to get a, a Node.js, we need to get a Yeoman installed, we need to get the SharePoint generator installed, and please always use the latest version of the SharePoint generator, and that will guarantee that uh, you, you will minimize any challenges related on uh, your solution, do version conflicts or security issues or whatever. So always use the latest version, uh, which, is, which is gonna be installed on your machine uh, by using just the npm install uh, dash g uh, at Microsoft slash generator SharePoint command. So in my, my, my environment, uh, if we go in here and if we do npm list uh, and I want to list the global ones and let's actually list here only the, the uh, first level of the global npm packages, we can see that I'm actually running the SharePoint framework 1.8.2 version uh, in this machine. So this is my development machine for SharePoint 2019. And this is really important thing to remember, always install the latest version of the SharePoint framework generator. And that will make sure that everything is fine tuned and polished and tested uh, with the latest possible capabilities for the SharePoint 2019 development as well. Now, okay, so now we have the everything installed we follow up on the guidance and, and set up the Node.js and everything else uh, on this machine. This is my development box. And then uh, let's actually create here uh, 2019. Uh, let's call this just a uh, web part. And let's go to that web part uh, folder, which where I'm going to actually scaffold and create my SharePoint framework solution. So let's clear up some space and let's do yo Microsoft uh, slash SharePoint. And that's going to start then the Yeoman generator for SharePoint framework, like we do obviously for SharePoint Online as well. Now, there's the generator. It's going to ask uh, a set of questions, uh, which is quite typical. If you followed up on any of our guidance, we will call this uh, our web part solution. And a really, really important question. Let me slightly adjust the size so it is actually adjusting. Uh, the spacing probably uh, in the window. Now, this is the key question, uh, when, uh, which is the environment uh, uh, question. So which environment we want to target our solution? And in here, the important thing to select is SharePoint 2019, if you're only targeted on SharePoint 2019 and forward. So any of these solutions which we create for SharePoint 2019 will work in SharePoint 2019 and also in SharePoint Online uh, because it's a we have a backward compatible support in SharePoint Online as well. Now, if you want to target SharePoint Framework 2016, uh, feature back to forward, uh, we do support SharePoint Framework in SharePoint 2016. Only web parts though, you can select this option. Or if you want to use something latest and greatest like the Craft API access or library components and so on, then you're going to use SharePoint Online only and your solution only works in a SharePoint Online. So in this case, the video was getting started in SharePoint 2019. So let's actually select that one. And because we are in a SharePoint 2019, uh, it's going to ask the component type. Um, before we actually go there, uh, it's going to ask, do you want to allow the tenant admin the choice being able to deploy a solution to all sites immediately without running any feature deployments and adding apps in the sites? This is so-called tenant-wide deployment capability, which is supported in SharePoint 2019, which basically means a farm-wide deployment capability. And what it means is that I, uh, in this case, when I do a yes, it means that whenever the solution with the web part has been installed to the app catalog, the web parts and extensions will be automatically available available within sites. Uh, really, really important uh, design decision uh, for your solution. And now, as we are in a SharePoint 2019 environment, we can create extensions 
because the, the modern extensions, the, the headers and footers, uh, field customizers and all of those are supported in SharePoint 2019. Or we can use the web part, uh, which is the typical case, uh, what we're going to use. Um, well, typical creation of the solution, absolutely. Um, the web parts are the ones which people are quite common, common uh, and used to use in SharePoint. So what are we going to call our web parts? Let's call this uh, SP2019 uh, demo, just to make sure that it's, it's a unique name. Description doesn't really matter on this case. We can find it using the SharePoint 2019 demo then in the web part picker. And then a question related on the framework. So uh, we kind of choose no JavaScript framework. Technically, uh, you can absolutely still use React uh, if you choose the no JavaScript framework, and then you adjust the, the solution. You can use Angular, you can use Vue.js, you can use whatever framework you want. Uh, within the SharePoint framework. So anything is supported. Uh, by default, we only support and provide these three options. But again, you can associate or use any JavaScript framework with your solution uh, by starting no JavaScript framework and then adjusting the solution based on the framework you've chosen to use. Now, that's going to then scaffold the solution. This is going to take a while, so we're going to speed up the video, make sure that everything is, uh, uh, well, you will, it's, it's faster to actually for you to watch the video. So let's speed up the video. And there we go, now our solution uh, has been scaffolded. And let's have a look on the solution quickly um, to kind of a pinpoint what is the differences here as we select that target environment uh, to be uh, SharePoint 2019. So if we have a look on the package JSON uh, file, uh, so looking at on this one, and uh, there's some updates, so let's, let me actually close those. So and in the package JSON, uh, we can actually see that our dependencies are using SharePoint 20, SharePoint Framework 1.4 or 1.4.1. So slightly depending on, on, a, on a setup. And that's why in our public documentation or in our messaging, we're saying that SharePoint 2019 is using SharePoint uh, Framework 1.4.x uh, because it's a combination of some packages from 1.4.1 and some buckets here is from 1.4.0. Now, this is basically then uh, the difference between uh, the, let's say, the latest SharePoint Online packages or solutions versus SharePoint 2019 solutions. Same applies if you select a solution to be targeted on SharePoint uh, 2016 in that human generator uh, question, uh, then these versions will be 1.1. But the key point to understand here, you do not have to install an older version of the human generator because uh, human generator is aware uh, or scaffolds you the right version of the of the of the packages as part of your solution based on your selection. Now let's do a small modification uh, in the UI so uh, we can actually see that our web part is working properly and it is that particular web part which we're actually using. So I'm going to add there welcome to SharePoint 2019 and marker and let's save that one. So now we're kind of good to go uh, of getting stuff uh, deployed. So let me go uh, in the command line and let's do Culp uh, bundle uh, dust ship. This is preparing or transcompiling uh, the the TypeScript to the JavaScript, um, so it is ready to be packaged as a SharePoint framework solution. That's not going to take it too long, slightly depending again on the environment and the complexity of your solution. And then we're going to do Culp, uh, Culp package uh, solution and that's the ship, which will prepare or create the actual um, package SPPKT file, which we're able to deploy then to the SharePoint 2019 environment and use this uh, web port. Now, what's really important to also understand here uh, is that uh, SharePoint 2019 does support asset packaging. So if I go back in here uh, in the package solution, uh, we can actually see that our uh, include client side assets uh, is by default true. So I do not have to care where I'm actually hosting these JavaScript files, everything is hosted automatically for me inside of the farm, as long as this setting is true. Now, you can alternatively host your uh, JavaScript files in a, a separate CDN in your corporate network, but uh, that adds additional complexity, which is not necessarily uh, the right option. So if possible, uh, and unless you have a valid uh, reasons, we would recommend to use uh, the asset packaging because that will take care of then the hosting for you.
So now we have this webpart SPPKT file actually in the SharePoint folder. Here we can see it. And it's basically containing all of the assets and I can send that to anybody and it will work in their SharePoint 2019 farm uh, uh, because it contains all of the assets. So it's not about CDN configuration. There's no additional complexity of making things happen. Now, the second option here, by the way, uh, was the question uh, in the Yeoman generator, which was, do we allow the solution to be deployed automatically to all of the sites? And that's the skip feature deployment question. Uh, we set true to that, and that means that the web part is automatically available across the farm uh, when it's getting deployed on the app catalog. Now, we can again say that this is false, and that means that the solution has to be explicitly installed to those site collections and sites where you want to actually use that. Again, depending on your solution design, that might be an option for you. Now, we can see the file actually getting created. So let me actually open up that in File Explorer. So we can actually see the file in here and we need to get it now deployed to the SharePoint 2019 farm. So we actually want to go to the farm and if there's a few things uh, in the farm which we, wanna, which we need to actually configure. So in the central admin, you need to make sure that whoever is the farm administrator, is it you or not, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you need to make sure that you have actually the apps capabilities and adding capabilities enabled. So you need to have an app catalog uh, existing in the farm because that is the mechanism how do we deploy SharePoint framework solutions as well. You also need to have an app configurations applied. And app configurations basically mean that you need to have an app URL defined for your apps but actually technically we're not using this. So this is kind of a uh, unfortunate leftovers uh, in due dependencies on the app, adding an app infrastructure that you need to define this app domain, even though with SharePoint framework, we do not actually use that. So it's a configurational requirement, but on runtime, as long as it has any value, it is good to go. So you don't actually need to uh, think about the routing or any DNS settings or anything like that to make SharePoint framework solutions work. Now, if you want to use SharePoint add-ins in your farms, then definitely you need to have follow-up on the app domain and make sure that that's rooting properly uh, within your corporate network. Now, so that's the app side of the things. And then we need to make sure that we have two specific uh, service applications uh, created, which are uh, needed for adding infrastructure. And adding infrastructure basically requirements are the app management service, which is this one in here, which isn't created by default in the farm. So you need to create that using the guidance which we have documented for SharePoint add-ins. And the second thing is the subscription setting service application uh, or sorry, the state service uh, uh, application, the serve, uh, which is actually being used by the app infrastructure as well. So these two are basically required to make everything work properly uh, within your farm. And if you don't have those running in your farm, the SharePoint framework solutions do not work again because they take advantage of the SharePoint adding infrastructure. Now, in my case, uh, those are all running. Uh, so I can actually go now to my app catalog uh, in the farm and we can say that I don't have any applications available here. So let's actually install our web port and track and shop that web port into the app catalog. That's going to validate to pre-validation of the solution. And then it's going to request that are we trusting the solution and do we want to make the solution available in all sides of the organization? Again, this is the tenant deployment option and we're going to say yes to that. So I'm going to have the web part available across all of the site collections, classic site collections and classic experiences and modern experiences uh, in this uh, farm. Now, it's important to realize that uh, the web part capability works in classic and modern experiences and then the extensions only work in the modern experiences, so in the modern pages. And, and with the modern pages, we mean the modern experiences with SharePoint, which are supported by SharePoint 2019. So this is the default uh, default uh, team site, which has some content. Uh, but in our case, let's actually go and create a new communication site. So let's go to the SharePoint root uh, start page. And then in here, let's create a site. You can actually see the modern uh, site creation capabilities and uh, functionality here. I'm going to choose a communication site or a design for the communication site. So let's use the showcase and let's do this. Uh, demo and call that as a demo site, create, uh, create a site collection. And because these are modern site collections, they are really fast to get created. So creating one doesn't take actually that long. So it's a matter of a few seconds and the, the 
the site collection is created in database, the site collection is available, and now we're able to actually start modifying the content uh, because again, it's a modern experiences, modern page with the modern uh, page experience as well. Now, in our case, we we basically uh, wanted to test our web part. So the web part is now in app catalog. So it's available in every single site, the existing sites, older sites, and also on new sites. So if I create a new page here, I can, uh, let's get rid of the, the header. I can add here uh, any web part which uh, out of the box web part, or I can actually search for SharePoint 2019 which we gave the name as the SharePoint 2019 demo for our web part in the scaffolding. So let's add about that one there. And we can actually see that it's the SharePoint 2019 text, which we modified into code. So this one is now getting served automatically and hosted automatically by the SharePoint farm without any CDN settings, uh, without any additional complexity. And you can create or use this web part in the classic pages or in the modern pages in any of the site collections within this tenant, within this farm, to be precise. This is not about tenant. Well, technically a one farm could be called as a one tenant as well, because that's the behavior from that perspective. But that's it from this one. So key, key things to remember, please use always the latest version of SharePoint Framework, uh, SharePoint Framework uh, Human Generators, select then the target environment, make sure that you have the service applications and app infrastructure enabled, including the URL. And then after that, uh, the SharePoint Framework solutions do work nicely on the SharePoint 2019 uh, environment. Hopefully, and enjoy the video. Mm -hmm.